Got a GoPro. Now the cheap. Oh, this is some kind of suppository. I don't know. It's bright out there today. We do get American cars in this country, you see? Okay. Our plan today, we're gonna try and read the fault codes on this Lexus LS 400, 1996. Uh, I can't even see it, that's crazy. You can go under there if you wish. From here, because it's much easier, he says, to do it. TE1 and E1. Bit easier to see on this picture. Much easier. Just bridge those with a bit of wire or paper clip. With that done, make sure you haven't left it in why would you why would I why would I do that? It says put it in neutral. Like so. Make sure the aircon is off. Turn the ignition on. Count the count the flashes. One, two, three. Not two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twenty-eight. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, fifty-two. 28, 52, and 21. An interesting combination. Killer power. So that says 28, 21, and 52. Again, keeps coming back. And that's all there is to it, really. Easy peasy. What I'm going to do next, I want to pull out the ECU and I want to have a good look at it inside and see what the situation is inside there because this is an old car and what we're looking at 23, 24 years old and there is a common problem with ECUs in this age of Toyota. Lexus in that the uh, the capacitors leak and cause all sorts of weird problems so just for my own peace of mind and because Kelvin from the cartoon company said I should get this ECU rebuilt but is it worth it when I'm gonna be swapping out to a, an aftermarket ECU. Yeah, it probably is because I can always put this this ECU back in it and run it run it stock. So, yeah. I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull it out and have a look at it. Oh. Right. <laughs> Start again. Let me see what I didn't do. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
trim off. Find your carpet broken. Somewhere is this in the way? Of course it is. Of course it is. Just take that out of there. I mean, not fun, not fun at all. Basically, I can't remember. It's been that long. Or has it? We need a 10 mil. There's a nut in there. There are some screws up there. And I can't remember if there's, there's, there's a nut there, but I haven't put that on from the last time I did it. Obviously. Obviously there's supposed to be a cap in there, there's supposed to be a cap there. And that's where your pollen filter lives. A normal. Take that nut off. The other one I showed you. These screws, I thought there was four, but there's perhaps only three. And it should just, it should just, it just. It just, yeah. It just pops out. Yeah, when you beat it a bit more, there's also these stupid uh, broken off clips. Yeah, that's that's broke. But it's supposed to be like that. And now I've broken it off. And then you've got some airbag wiring just there. What you've got to do with that is push it in, twist it, so that you can pull it out from the glove box. There's also probably uh, a wire there for the light, which I think I've buried under the carpet somewhere. And then you can take the whole thing out. It's as easy as that. It should be. Oh, there's the ECU. Just there. So, so that's good. I've got some wires that have been taped up. Oh dear. So, we just need to figure out how it comes off. It seems pretty solid up there. Hmm. Right, well I can see some 10 mil bolts. So let's just let's just go at it and just undo stuff until it comes off. Up there, I'm just gonna take it out because uh, it's out of the way then isn't it? Cruise control. That's what that is. Now the other one. I'm going to have to use the spanner on because I can't get to it with a socket. Why did I not bring my ratchet spanner? Is that one off? Whatsoever. Oh, that's handy. Now I've got a load more there. One that's already missing. Oh, it does feel a bit free now. Be. What is that one? So this, this is like a relay. Something adjustable. Is 
is at the bottom. Sorry, I just hit you in the face. Where does that one go? To something where there's no room to get it off whatsoever. Please don't tell me to take all this. No! I don't even know how that comes out. I don't want to break that. If I can help it. Okay. This is where we're at at the minute. God knows why. Worst screwdriver for this for this job. Oh, that's the most I've ever seen of anything. Oh, that's why that's not coming off. There is a big bar. Up there. Oh, there it goes, look, just, just, oh, look. Now there's two more bolts, two more nuts up there. One. And another loose one. Emergency door control. Receiver door control. It's an emergency. It doesn't say that at all. Right. That bit just. Thing. All the ones Kelvin are not this big. What's going on? Okay, so the first thing I've done is marked the position of these brackets because I am so forgetful, I'll forget which one goes where, and that'll be the end of that. So now they're off. I guess I'll take this lid off. The lid is off. Then there's more screws. With those screws out, you can hinge the board back on those ribbons and get to the components inside and have a good look at all the capacitors. Doesn't that look amazing with the light shining through the back? Yeah, so looking at the bottom of the legs of the capacitors, looking for any kind of fluid, discoloration, um, green stuff, any kind of black. And as you can see on this one, it looks mint. They all look great. Could not see a problem, but it's still 24 years old. And if they're not leaking now, they could do tomorrow or they could do next year. But if I get them swapped now, at least they're not gonna be a problem for another 20 years. And I've got a good spare ECU. So I put it all back together. That was a laugh. 
back together now though. So the question is now, does it still work? Well, that's in neutral, so let's put it in park. Magic. It's pretty good. Well, the next thing to do is to use this, which fits onto the diagnostic port in the engine bay. This video has just crept over the 15 minute mark, which is where I wanted it to be. So we're gonna use the, um, the Toyo BD-1 in the next little video. I'm gonna do only a little 10 minute job. So watch out for that coming up very soon. Thanks for watching guys. Join me again. If you've watched it this far, shout out to the Rushton.